Hello, and welcome to Let's Make a Top-Down Shooter. So we're going to start with a new project here. I'm going to make it third person instead of top-down because I don't want the pathfinding. They will end up being very similar projects, however, so if you preferred starting with top-down, there should not be that many changes to make. I'm going to make this a C++ project, include starter content, and I'm going to call it TDS. Now I could give this a better name, but I'm being picky here. I want my auto-generated files to have the same prefix as the rest of the ones I create. So this video is about setting up the Gameplay Ability System, or ASC. Uh, and we're going to do that through the player state instead of the character. Uh, it will uh, share a lot of steps with the Now You're Cooking with Gas project setup linked below. And as with anything software development related, there are benefits and drawbacks to either approach. Epic's documentation states, in some cases, especially those where an actor can be destroyed and respawned, you may want to keep the ability system component elsewhere, such as the player state. And then they attach it to the actor instead for simplicity. Since the player state is maintained across character destruction and respawn, the portions of gas that are owned by the player state will not need to be reapplied. However, you might still want some abilities and effects owned by the character, which is what we will be doing this project. So the first thing we're going to do is manage plugin. I'm going to add gameplay abilities, which will force a restart of the editor. And with that, just going to close the editor. And as you can see in the Solution Explorer, there's things that are a little different in uh, 5.3. All right, so to complete setting up the gameplay ability system, uh, we need to add the Gameplay Abilities, Gameplay Tasks, and Gameplay Tags. And I'm just going to add them to the private dependency module names. Next, you want to go into the uh, base file of your project. So whatever your project name is, .h. I'm going to add an enum here. This will be the input ability um, or input ID for the ability that we're going to use. I'm going to set up the characters to use a primary and secondary ability, as well as a movement ability and a utility ability. Lastly, weapons will be items that can be equipped, dropped, etc., and they will have a fire ability and alt fire ability. Well, sometimes. So with that, we can go back into the editor and hit F7. Wait for it to finish building. Hit F5. I want to launch the editor through Visual Studio most of the time. So first I'm going to create two C++ classes. The first one I want is the gameplay ability, which is way down at the bottom. We're going to call the uh, classes we use TDS and whatever name is appropriate. I'm going to click public here so that it splits the files into public and private folders. Should not have clicked reload all yet. We're going to subclass the player state as well. Similarly called TDS player state. Let's 
with that done, we can close the editor. And since I did it too early, I need to close and reopen the solution. In the gameplay ability, we're going to add an include for the uh, file where we added the enum. And then just add a variable that will be used by the abilities and the ability system component. All right, and for the player state, we're going to include the ability system interface. that we can add it here. We want to add a constructor so that we can initialize the ability system component. This get ability system component function is required by the interface. And then we're going to maintain a pointer variable to the ability system component. So in the CPP file, we need to also include ability system component instead of interface. We need to build the constructor and the get function. The constructor is just creating the default sub-object for the ability system component, making sure it's replicated. If you're doing a network project, which this will not be, um, you might want to also call ability system components set replication mode and also the update net frequency. There's a little more information about that in the docs and the Tranic uh, gas documentation that will be linked in the description. Next I want to update the character similarly. The character will also have the ability system interface. which of course needs this function as well. It's gonna work a little differently. Um, I'm also creating a utility function to initialize the ability system component and then overriding the possessed by and on rep player, st player state functions. The ability system component variable this time is a weak object pointer of type ability system component. So we include the ability system component Include again. And the functions that were just added. So in this case, the ability or get ability system component will return, will use the weak object pointer dot get. In both on rep player state and possessed by, we're just calling the init ability system component after calling the super functions. And then in the init ability system component, we are calling get player state. We're casting it to our new one, making sure it's valid. And then our ability system component in the character is just the one that is retrieved from the player state. So long as it's not valid, we're going to call init ability actor info, where we're setting the act or owner actor to the player state and the avatar actor to the character. Now this is red because I need to include the define, which I can do that way. So back into the editor. Once we fix that build error. Ah yes. Never put your include files after the dot generated. No matter how many times you do this, sometimes you just make that mistake. All right. Launch the editor again.
All right, next I'm going to create a folder here for blueprints that don't deserve to be in another folder. That was the wrong button. And then I'm going to create a player state blueprint. This will be from our TDS player state. I'm just going to call it PP player state. I'm going to open that up, which will prompt this window. I'd like to have them right inside. So in Asset Editor Open Location, I'm just going to switch this to Main Window. And when I open it, I go to the Main Window. It doesn't open in full Blueprint Editor all the time. And uh, unless they added 5.3 and I haven't seen it, you can't, you can't have that as a default. It's kind of annoying. Uh, I'm going to set my compile here to always save on compile. And for this, I'm just going to throw in a print state. Compile that. And if I hit play, you can see there's no print state. So to have the player state set up, you need to add it to the game mode. For that, we're going to create another blueprint for game mode. The game mode is auto-generated as part of creating the project, so we'll use that one. I'm going to call this BP game mode. So to actually make sure the game mode is being used, you can go into the world settings for the map you're on. And in the game mode override, I'll set this to none. Then in project settings, I'm going to open this up, do a search for game mode. And we have default game mode. I'm going to set that to our BP game mode. And then I can set the player state here. which also updates it in here, right there. However, that does need to be compiled, so it's still worth opening. Now if I hit play, you can see that the player state is now set up. Now that it's the default, that also means that anytime you create a new level, um, it will have game road override to none, and then it will use that default one. The other option here would have been to set the override itself to the blueprint. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and you would like to see more, you know what to do. And if you would like to support this channel or you just want to download the project files, you can do so through the Patreon link below.